What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanna start off this video and just say thanks for all the love on the last video. That thing was a true labor of love. Uh, share it with your friends if they are data nerds or country fans and you think they'll enjoy it, but I'm really pleased with the performance of it so far and I'd love to see it keep taking off. I'm so lucky to get to do what I love doing here on YouTube and I'm really thankful when I make something and it connects with people and you guys let me know that. I've been busy in the wake of that video. I just recorded a Patreon podcast about the ACM Awards, a little about the new Tyler Childers album, them. I got new merch in and you can uh, check out the restock of the It's Okay to Think About Country Music and the Thicket shirts that are at gradywsmith.bigcartel.com. But I know I haven't posted a video and I need a simple edit because that last video was the opposite of a simple edit. So today I'm going to do something kind of like a last week I asked you, one of PewDiePie's Lawai videos. Leave your entries in the subreddit pros and I'll watch submissions in the next episode of Lawai except I'm gonna do a Lamai video because it's last month I asked you on the subreddit on country music stuff I posed a question about country gateway songs what are the songs that get people into country music because I get so many messages that say something along the lines of dude I loved the song Cruise when it came out and now I listen to a lot of Cody Jinx or I love Turnpike Troubadours but it was honestly Florida Georgia Lines Cruise that got me into country music and people say the same things about songs as varied as Old Town Road which got some people into the genre even if I would not say Old Town Road is country as well as you know Oh Brother Where Art Thou and I Am A Man Of Constant Sorrow which maybe led people down a bluegrass path which eventually got them to country. I know I personally would say that my real gateway into the genre was courtesy of the red white and blue by toby keith my daddy served in the army we lost his right eye and i wouldn't say toby keith is in my top five or top ten artists of all time but hey that's where i got started so i was interested in hearing y'all's perspective on what are some country gateway songs that got you into the genre so if i have some of the top most upvoted answers pulled and let's see what y'all had to say so the first comment comes from sea tide it says dolly parton's done a number of things to get people into country music such as playing Aunt Dolly on Hannah Montana and lately doing EDM and contemporary Christian collaborations. She mentions that now most of her fans are under the age of 40. I think that's a great point. Dolly Parton has been one of the most well adapting artists to new mediums. I feel like she's constantly leveraged her brand and gotten involved in scenes that she might not otherwise get into just as a country artist, whether that's her acting, whether it's her freaking amusement park, whether it is her just general presence on social media and her collaborations with people outside of her own genre. And now of course her whole Netflix deal as well as her NBC deal, which is kind of telling stories based on her songs. There's a reason we still talk about Dolly Parton today and it's because she has made sure she gets herself in front of new audiences constantly. And not only is that savvy, I guess it is a normal gateway for a lot of country fans. Next comment is from Salty Armadillo, which is just a top notch username. It says, I don't know about anyone else, but personally it was seven and seven by Turnpike Troubadours. I had no clue to be the boy who you the mama warned you about. This guy must be from Texas or Oklahoma or somewhere where red dirt music and the whole Texas scene is actually revered, actually seen as cool. Because definitely it was not my experience that when that song was out they were seen as cool or anyone was talking about Turnpike Troubadours. It was the kind of thing that you had to go looking to find that scene. But I do know that has really been changing in the internet age and now there is something a little bit punk, a little bit rebel about a lot of the Texas scene. And go check out my Texas video if you haven't. I talk about that in there. And I wonder if for some people that are fans of Turnpike or something and that's how they get into country, if it is a journey for them to sort of open their mind and maybe look at the pop country stuff that might not be very cool in that scene and maybe for Salty Arm Armadillo, are you trying to find out about like Morgan Wallen or opening your mind to Hardy or even Cody Johnson or something? But if your gateway into country music is Turnpike Troubadours, I feel like that is a really strong start to your country music fandom. That's awesome. Next one is a comment from Grayson Guitar. It says, the songs that got me into country were probably Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson, I Ain't As Good As I Once Was by Toby Keith, and listening to country radio. My first time being in Nashville also really got me into it, just sort of absorbing all the sounds and history. Comments like this one, I think, are really indicative of a lot of people's experience, which is, it's fun that gets people into music. When I go to Nashville, what I like to do is actually go to the bars on Music Row where 
there's tons of bachelorette parties happening and it can feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just in the center of tourist land as if I'm not a tourist myself. And it's nice for me to go there and just remember most people are coming here to have fun. And at the end of the day, it's just music. And for a lot of people, it's not any deeper than I want to have fun. I want to hear something like Chattahoochee and dance around a little. I want to giggle when I listen to I, I Ain't As Good As I Once Was. And maybe I want to go to a bar, hang with friends, sing along to something like Friends in Low Places and enjoy myself. And Chattahoochee, I mean, I know it was popular, but who could have guessed that Chattahoochee would end up being this enduring, iconic hit that now is like very, very cool among young people. It's just interesting. Dingwall Dave says, in any bar I know, at least in Scotland, hey, shouts to Scotland. If someone plays The Gambler, everyone sings along badly, enthusiastically, and loudly. Oh man, isn't that what you want to hear in a bar in the UK? But yeah, The Gambler is one of those amazing sing-along songs. I feel like The Gambler, Strawberry Wine, what are some others that you just have to sing along to? Friends in low places. Yeah, if I ever heard people singing along to The Gambler in a bar, I would not hold them, fold them, walk away, or run. I would stay right there and sing along with them. Because again, it's nice to, it's nice to have fun. It's nice to party. And one day, you know, maybe when 2020 ends, we'll be able to do that again. Mirror of Nature has a pretty complex comment that says, this really depends on who you're trying to get into country, because I'd pick different things for different people. So for example, indie rock, Sarah Shook or Turnpike Troubadours, Prague or Psychedelic Rock, Billy Strings. We're going to call that Prague. Interesting. I feel like I'd call that Newgrass or something. Classic Rock, Waylon Jennings or Ray Wiley Hubbard. Oh, okay. So they're, if they're a fan of Prague or Psychedelic Rock, you'd play them Billy Strings. If they're a fan of Classic Rock, you'd play them Waylon or Ray Wiley Hubbard. For a punk fan, Hellbound Glory or Hank 3. For pop, Casey Musgraves or Whitney Rose. Okay. I think those make sense. Um, or like... Kane Brown for a lot of pop fans. For rap, Hank 3 or Crazed Country Rebel. Oh, you'd have to do Yellow Wolf for rap or Upchurch. Hello. Um, for an R&B fan, Chris Stapleton or Charlie Crockett. I think that works. Or, or I'd throw Yola in that mix as well. Um, I've left out blues because if you like blues, I'll assume you like most of the older classic country stuff. It's a great comment. A great comment overall and... I like that you think about what people would want to hear because I think that a lot of people don't do that with music. They like something, but they don't necessarily think about the person they're recommending it to, and then it's just really annoying. This is Doomray77. As a younger fan, it was a lot of 2012 bro country that got me into country music. When I was about 11, I remember loving songs like That's My Kind of Night, Boys Around Here, and yes, even Cruise. If those songs were released today, I would probably hate them, but I was younger then, and now those songs are nostalgic guilty pleasures to me. But I also really liked beachy songs like Toes and Knee Deep by Zach Brown, and Kenny Chesney songs such as Beer in Mexico and Pirate Flag. Today I get my friends to listen to songs by Luke Combs and Morgan Wallen. They're so popular and their songs are really fun to listen to and I think they are currently bringing a lot of people into the genre. They're also really good with social media which helps pull in younger fans. I can co-sign all of that stuff, Doom Ray. I know I was a little older. I was in this spot where I'm in my early 20s and really cynical about how crappy music is back in 2012 and I think a lot of that bro country I was just rolling my eyes at. But as I've gotten a little bit older, I have recognized that for a lot of people, it is what brought them into the genre. That doesn't mean I think the songwriting is good. Doesn't mean I'm not very glad that that era is behind us because I thought it was super derivative. However, I can recognize the ways it brought people into the genre. And damn, you're saying you were 11 at the time, you know? I remember when Mason Ramsey first came out with his EP, I was like, oh, is this the sort of traditional things I was hoping that Lil Hank Williams was going to make? And then I had to remember, He's 11. I mean, I know he's not 11 now, but he was 11. You're not gonna have your developed taste when you're 11, and you shouldn't. I don't think many people are trying to go from Kids Bop to Jason Isbell. That's just not how it works. Although someone should definitely pay for a Kids Bop version of Southeastern. I would love to hear a chorus of children sing Elephant. And I think you have named a little sub niche also with these beachy songs like Toes and Kenny Chesney and even stuff like Pirate Flag and Beer in Mexico. I think Jake Owen has kind of taken up that banner and when Jimmy Buffett flirts with the genre as well. It's interesting. I think that beachy stuff does bring some people into the genre. Or maybe I'm overthinking it and they are just drinking margaritas while on vacation in Puerto Vallarta. Rich Turn 14080 says, Zach Brown Band has forever. Well, until the owl ruined a solid week of my life. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Well, I think we all felt that pain.
They've always been the country artist that my adamant country hater friends acknowledge with, but I like Zach Brown Band. Yeah, I think Zach Brown Band was so undeniably amazing for a solid decade and songs like Colder Weather make you wanna just sob and then songs like Chicken Fried and Toes make you wanna sing along. They had the harmonies and they had still, you know, Wyatt Durrett kind of writing with them on the regular. He's now writing more with Luke Combs. And lately it seems like they're kind of finding their path again. I think Zach needed to go on a little spiritual detour with the owl and the controversy and Swayze. I can't be your Tom Cruise, bitch. I'm Patrick Swayze. Kylie B says, I got my brother into country with What Was I Thinking by Dirk Bentley, and I brought my fiance back to enjoying country with You Look Like I Need a Drink by Justin Moore. Man, two fine, fine, fine songs. I love that you got your fiance back into country with that song because it makes me feel like, do you sometimes go a little bit crazy on your fiance? Because that song is about, um, You look like I need a drink right now. A girl having such a look upon her face and about to unleash so much attitude that he knows preemptively he's going to need a drink. So props to you for putting your guy in his place when you need to and for getting him back in the country. I can't read this username, but it says, for me, it was Life is a Highway by Rascal Flats." Man, that, I, I've been seeing that more and more and more on TikTok. I even mentioned it in my Party Jam video that... Uh, Life is a Highway is like such a gateway for a lot of kiddos. I think the Cars movies really opened a lot of people's eyes to at least Rascal Flats and then maybe the rest of country music. But there is like a, a young love of Life is a Highway. Jake Daddio is another one that mentions early 2010s when he was young, eight, nine, 10 years old with songs like Chicken Fried and Cruise. Those were the songs I thought of as country. The artist that really threw me into the genre was probably Thomas Redd. Die a Happy Man hooked me and in October of 2017, I found his 16 album and that did it for me as far as getting into country. If it weren't for pop country, I never would have found George Strait, Brad Paisley, etc. And more importantly, I never would have fallen in love with this genre of music. It's cool to think about the journey that we all go on. It helps me hold pop country a little more loosely in my hand and I've always said that I think the genre would be stronger if we just kind of expanded the umbrella. I think my issue with pop country is often that it is presented in mainstream media at award shows as the only kind of country that exists. But to me, so long as an artist like Thomas Rhett with a song like Life Changes can exist and still get the same kind of exposure as an artist like, yeah, let's say Brad Paisley, or let's say someone independent like Tyler Childers, or let's say someone like Cody Jinx. We can all win if everything can kind of get acknowledged. It's mostly just like a branding issue I find, and that's why on this channel I try to put the more independent and the more traditional artists right there alongside the popular artists and think that would be prudent for the industry and the genre as a whole to do. Interesting. So those were some songs that got people into country music and it's my hope that they continue to explore and continue to find new stuff. It's my favorite feedback to get about the channel is that people, you know, say, hey, I started out just being a fan and checked out a Kane Brown review, but now you've introduced me to this whole world of independent country and they have a more diverse listening experience and have kind of ventured past the radio. I love hearing that and I love hearing people find good music and wherever you are in your country music journey, if you're just standing at the gate or if you are miles and miles down the path or if, hey, maybe you've even shut the gate and said, I'm done with the genre. It's okay. At the end of the day, it's just music, and I hope we are all finding stuff that we enjoy listening to. Check out the subreddit if you haven't. Check out the merch if you haven't. All the links to all my stuff are down below, and um, yeah, that's it, guys. Bye.